Hey everyone, welcome back to Clinical Physio with me, Khalid Maidan. In today's video, we're going to be taking you through Phelan's test. And this test is designed to see whether or not our patient presents with carpal tunnel syndrome, which is a compression of the median nerve at the carpal tunnel. So let's go into it. The carpal tunnel is the space between the carpal bones of the wrist joint and the flexor retinaculum, which is an arch-like structure which sits over the top of those bones. In the space between those structures is where the median nerve runs from the elbow down and into the hand. And the relevance of this is that the flexor retinaculum can sometimes compress the median nerve in that tunnel, which causes carpal tunnel syndrome. So let's go into the test. We're going to ask our patient to join the dorsal aspects of their hands together and you want to make sure that the highest point of the dorsum of the hands are touching during the test. From here, we ask our patient to leave their elbows where they are, but to lift their hands up like so. And what this does is it will compress the median nerve at the carpal tunnel because of the position. And we're going to ask our patient to hold this position for about 30 seconds, and we're going to check what they feel. If they report symptoms of either pain, pins and needles, or numbness in a specific distribution in the hand, which is the thumb, or the first digit, the second digit, the third digit, and the lateral half of the fourth digit, then this is a positive outcome for carpal tunnel syndrome. So what do we find with this test in clinical practice? Well, it is a test we like, but one of the most common things you'll see is that your patient will want to try and separate the very top of the dorsum of the hand like so, um, because this will ease the pressure on the carpal tunnel. So you may find yourself constantly reminding your patient, no, no, make sure that you keep the hands together like so. If you find that you need to do this a couple of times and you want to stop the test, whilst it isn't an exact replica of the test, you can try and re create it on one arm by having your patient's elbow like so, and then flexing the wrist, and having your own hand on the dorsum of the hand like so, and therefore bringing the wrist into passive flexion. Make sure when you do this that you don't put your hand over the fingers to provide the pressure, it's with the hand, with your hand over the dorsum of the patient's hand. 